very good morning to all of you okay so you are ready to join with today dhamma talk or it can be dhamma discussion and uh, sharing about the teachings of the buddha dhamma word is very uh, vast meaningful word dhamma not only the buddha's teaching all phenomena the existing phenomena's process can consider as dhamma the natural universal nature universal nature also we call as dhamma hmm? what the buddha discovered uh, is actually universal nature you know so sometimes we we attach to our religion people by birth or after converting or get into any religion they always attached to the religion they, and they think that their own religion is only the the correct teaching you know what buddha said he said kullu upamam bikave dhamman desisami taranathaya no gahanathaya the dhamma that i have realized i teach to you comparing with the raft or we can use word ship that we use from this shore to go to the far shore of the ocean so my dhamma also just like craft or ship taranattaya no gahanattaya so from here you know we are a cruise right you can you can go to the indonesia from malacca from jb so you think that uh, the cruise or ferry very uh, helpful for us that's why better we don't get into it uh we carry it and we we all together we carry it and jump or get down to the to the ocean to go to the other side do you think it's possible do you think you can go to the other so side of the sea no even after you get into the land you think that oh we came to here because of this ferry so better we take it wherever we go we carry it is it wise decision now no monks my dhamma is to is for you to get into the ferry or ship and reach to the far shore or reach to the ultimate uh, destination no gahanatta i not to carry so what is happening there now uh, we always we are our effort is to to carry it you know we talk too much about buddha's teaching but when we come to practice very less uh and we we write too many books about buddha's teaching sometime mixing 
mixture in with the, our own concepts but the writers if we check their their behaviors maybe even they cannot uh, maintain happy family life you know they are well known writers on buddha's teaching but get into uh, know about their family background or social background is very very uh, uh, you know we can call it uh, is not in practice not in practical way so buddha's teaching for us to apply every moment to our lives then only we can uh, we can really see who is the buddha yo dhammang passati so mang passati who can see me can we see the buddha through the, this image statue we are not sure whether the buddha statue made by the artist is a real nature or you know we don't know but to develop our devotion we imagine this is our sakyamuni buddha but when you deeply go into the buddha's teaching only you can see really the who was the buddha how you deeply go into the buddha's teaching is not only acquiring knowledge you know maybe you are professor you are doctor you are what kind of person in buddhism but if you don't apply the buddha's teaching into your life then you are not go deeply going into the buddha's teaching for example every day from the day that we came to know buddhism everywhere even our family sometime you know everywhere talking about anicca impermanence impermanence means everything in this universe subjected to three movement upad rising titti titas anyatattam uh, looks like remaining for a moment but is still changing the moment of changing and bhanga uh, the moment of disappearing or demise material and immaterial every kind of energies in this universe subjected to these three momentary changes okay so anicca so we know that you know we know yeah everything impermanence but in our lives in case if anything that are dear to us anyone or anything separated then we cannot uh, we cannot keep our mind strong you know when you are gaining things for your life you are being happy when you lost something you worry so we talk about anicca but practically we are not applying this impermanence nature to every kind of changes that is happening within us and out of world if you can apply you know my body every moment are really changing we are dying moment by moment 
when we use the word die is something totally disappearance the concept come to us but the the three movements just now mentioned to you uppada titi and bang arising changing for a moment and demise this thing within us happening every moment sometimes we feel our body very comfortable sometimes very uncomfortable sometimes pain here and there sometimes very very joyful feeling comfortable feelings sometimes hunger after eating no hunger this this is the impermanence sometimes get sick sick sometimes no sick impermanence so all the internal changes we have to apply to the impermanence external changes we have to apply to the impermanence so today our oh, brother bobby arranged the talk when you come here no bante no people he said something today arranging but it is not there then you come here you blame him and go back because he said announce there is a dhamma talk but it is not there you are not ready to apply to impermanence the situations if you are capable to ap apply situations to this universal nature you are very very comfortable person people promise us to do this but they don't do what we are doing we let angry thoughts aggressive thoughts to to overcome our our wisdom wisdom the the impermanence dhamma or the nature objected to wisdom uh anger desire jealousy and you know other kind of dimension or proudness all these objected to emotions okay so if we can open our wisdom for <coughs> everything every situations in our life then very happy you can spend happy life you want your children to be like this and that but they are behaving in other way apply impermanence still you play your role you can play your role as mother and father but change is try to apply to impermanence maybe your husband no wife behaving in different way keep your love and other qualities towards her or him changes apply to impermanence so when you practice in this way you can see the buddha you can see how great wise is the buddha how he realized this universal nature and how useful for beings to understand okay so dhamma actually for that for that not just only to discuss not just only to learn to hear hearing dhamma is one way for enlightenment because can touch our wisdom so listening to dhamma and uh, kalyana mitra association with good friends are very powerful forces that help you to reach to the ultimate reality the wisdom if you don't have kalyana mitra sampada what we call 
the wealth that you gain through good friends because for you sangha members are kalyana mittas for you and your dhamma friends are kalyana mittas for you they ask you to come and practice those who are not kalyana mittas they ask you to come and go for shopping and go for eating eh hey, i found a very good restaurant uh, yeah, this food and that food is nice they call only for that kalyana mittas can call for dhamma at the same time can call for shopping or makan they can do it even though they are there still they are talking something about the dhamma about the dhamma means no need to label uh, buddha's teaching no need to label the buddhism dhamma is this universal nature just now i mentioned you the impermanence <coughs> how to apply you can you can uh, even though they tell something maybe they are with anxiety and depression because of family problems social problems why you can help them to be aware this nature you may associate kalyana mittas at the same time try to be kalyana mittas for others that is how you benefit your life for this society you know don't be selfish selfish only yourself i only must attain to nibbana try to share you know those who don't know those who don't know we, you can help them okay it's uh, this is just introduction for today topic uh, today we are going to discuss how generosity link to the nibbana okay first we uh, try to understand what is nibbana and pali word is nibbana the sanskrit word uh, is nirvana many chinese after death go to there right uh -huh. especially in malaysia and i think indonesia also got right huh from from indonesia right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah if you have if enough money then uh, uh, after death you are in nirvana if not where got some other places like <laughs> yeah and there are some higher places and low places right hmm yeah okay nirvana nirvana vana means vana means what vana means craving tanha vana these are synonyms for craving tanha tanha and vana vana is another synonym for craving ni is a preposition ni preposition in sanskrit nir pali ni ni means um, totally absence totally absence so totally absence of craving is called nibbana or nirvana uh, how the first sermon of the buddha the first sermon of the buddha is the dhamma chakka sutta dhamma chakka 
sutta, the wheel of the Dhamma. The Buddha explained to five ascetics four noble truths that he has realized himself. Suffering, cause for the suffering, cessation of suffering and the path to the cessation of suffering. So first noble truth is Dukkha. Dukkha, the translation into English is not proper translation as suffering. Some, some people translate as stress. Some people translate unsatisfactoriness. So all meanings like unsatisfactoriness, suffering, impo, uh, what called the uh, pain, physical pain, mental pain, uncomfortable feelings and also lamentation, despair, all these feelings, behaviors all included for this the word of Dukkha. Uh, what Buddha realizes actually this world there is no something uh, to say as happy or comfortable. This world based on Dukkha. It means if you see through wisdom, through wisdom we can see that everything finally come to suffering. You know, happiness, comfortable feelings actually that, that we make through changes of our posture. Changes of our posture uh, give us some comfortable feeling. But again back to the nature of, its nature of Dukkha. So this is why, why uh, this suffering exists because of craving, because of craving. So this table, this table made of four elements is not suffering itself because no consciousness, no attachment in, within this, I mean within this table, no mental uh, entities, no attachment, nothing. The four elements are there, just remaining it itself. But beings attached to, attached to their body, attached to their feelings, perceptions, attached to their ideas. So, because of that attachment or craving or we call grasping, they are suffering. Then Nibbana means what? The cause for this suffering actually attachment, grasping or craving. Huh? Craving, grasping, attachment is the cause for suffering. So if, we, if you want to stop your suffering only way is to cut off your craving what buddha mentioned in the dhamma chakka sutta katama cha bikkhave dukkha nirodang arya satchang yo tassa yeva tanhaya someone yo tassa yeva tannahaya asesa viraga nirodho come to the cessation of this craving remainlessly totally come to the uh, state of totally as absence of craving asesa viraga nirodho ah, now we meet another few words adjectives chago patini sago mutti analayo 
means letting go, dispassion, release, liberate, and detachment. Nibbana means letting go of craving, dispassion, uh, detachment, and totally absence. Asesa viraga nirodo, totally absence of craving. Okay, so it is not a place that you are going to after death. You can experience, we can experience Nibbana within this life if we train our mind to let go everything. Let go craving. Let go attachment. Okay? In this Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, when the Buddha explained this uh, Nibbana, the word the Buddha used Chaga. Chaga is the word we use for Dana. Dana, Chaga, Parichaga. Three words means giving away. Dana, Chaga, C A C long A. C long A means cha g cha g and parichag. Parichag. Add in a preposition, we again call the chaga parichag. These words mean letting go or giving up. Giving up. Uh, you know bodhisattva, bodhisattvas, uh, in Theravada Buddhism there are ten paramitas, ten perfections to be a Buddha, have to complete. Even to be an arahant, you have to complete ten paramitas. You, uh, to be a Pacheka Buddha, private Buddha, still you have to practice these ten paramitas, different levels. Different levels. In Mahayana Buddhism, there are six paramitas, six perfections. Okay, so there are some differences. So we we pay our attention to the ten paramitas. Why? What are these ten paramitas? Actually, is the way how how purify your energy and make powerful your mental energy to attain the nibbana for realization. Maybe we have practiced in our previous lives these ten paramitas. Dhanan, silan, parichagan, ajjavan. Dhanan, silan, cha, nekhamma. Panya, viriyena, panchaman. Do you know ten paramitas? Dhanan, dhanan, silan, cha, nekhamma. Dhanan means giving. Silan. Morality, Nekam, Renunciation, Panya, Wisdom, you know, Vi, uh, Panya, Virya, en Energy, Effort or Striving, Panya, Virya and Panchamang, Kanti, Patience, Satcha, Truthfulness, Adittana, Determination, Metta, Loving Kindness, Upekha, Equanimity, Indifference, Level of the Mind. 
these are the ten perfections means internal qualities that we have to develop so if you are we all can be bodhisattvas if we follow buddha's teaching we all are bodhisattvas why not bodhisattvas to be the may maybe not bodhisattvas to be the buddha but we must be arahants one day so if we must be arahant then we have to develop these ten perfections you know so bo bodhisattva firstly started to practice dana the first one dana it doesn't mean that you must complete first one and then go to next one all the qualities you have to develop equally but dana word very important in this practice why ultimate goal is cessation of craving totally and the reason why we travel in this circle of birth and death because of craving if no craving we are not traveling this circle of birth and death we are not integrated with this circle ultimate goal is the absence total absence of craving reason why we travel this sansara is the craving so the dana is the way to reduce your craving you know when you give dana uh, how you give dana you just not have to examine yourself how i practice dana because people ask me to give donate here and there i just transfer money and i think i did dana isn't it nowadays nowadays that is how you are doing dana how you get oh something yeah something looks like okay uh, i think i myself just transfer money and say okay i did it <coughs> then how other way you are doing dana sometime you are uh, there's a bante there so you go to a uh, shop and get some food and go and give and that's all right you don't know whether good food or not you don't care whether it's uh, suitable for that monk or not you don't care you just buy some food and give isn't it no <laughs> i mean uh yeah this dana buddha's teaching is you know if you know the benefit of dana you even don't need your rice your meal your meal yourself you want to give at least little bit to someone maybe to a bird or, bird or dog or someone or you know if you know the power of dana ah danan thanam manusana dana is space you are creating a space in this human world to come back again it's very powerful uh teaching you know it means danan thanam manusana so you you reserve one place in this world in this human world after our end of this sansara to be here because why human world is only the place for you to practice if you born in heaven 
you will have too many things but no dhamma no talk about hell so the best place human world dana saggas sopana dana is a ladder to where to heaven dana saggas sopana dana while you are living here you make uh, handmade a uh, ladder to sag to the heaven so when in come to the end of this life we can go to the heaven because of dana why this is very powerful okay if i talk about giving dana food and all these to sangha is is a different topic huh i have to explain it in many ways and how to make it and how to make it very clear you know even you make donations sometimes uh for example you know if you i just say one thing that you know if you offer dana to the sangha you just drive to a restaurant buy something and go and offer you go to market buy vegetables and other things come back home prepare yourself cut uh, vegetables cut onions and cook yourself and prepare very respectfully and bring to temple and offer what is different of actions effort actions the quantity of actions quantity of thoughts you know towards that meritorious deed that you are performing going to be performed is too different you know so the the result of our thoughts our energy our our actions our words become more powerful when we do ourselves it hmm so something like that just just to mention you however uh now the uh, another matter now you have to decide yourself when you give something okay what you are giving actually you didn't bring anything to this world even you didn't bring one cloth to cover your naked when you enter to this world nothing but since the date you are here you are very powerful to accumulate things you know how that power come ha huh? two energies connect together effort and power of previous karma even though some people uh, work hard to achieve success they are still in the same level the reason no enough merits for them to to make it powerful you know you, like you take sands you know last time even now now got new machines but last time a uh, uh, a grinder like you know with made of stone so some some grains that can produce oil including coconut you put uh, add and you uh, grind you know when you grind you can get oil grinding is the effort that you are making when the the 
ingredients that you use should be conditioned with the condition to make oil then you can get oil even though you are grinding adding some sands to this machine you are grinding long time still you can't get you can't get oil because conditions are not there so the conditions means the power of karma the power of karma when connect together with your effort a person can be very successful in this material world okay so now the problem is whether you are when you give away something what how your mind is working now i have to be very careful because if your mind is not in proper level a state then the giving become very weak thing maybe you are no matter how much how many things you are giving the matter is how your mind is you know people think that giving a lot will gain lot yes giving lot will gain multiple things if the same time you can make your mind very clear uh, pure and very happy and no expectations no expectations the buddha said when you give something pubbeva dana sumano dadang chittam pasadayang dattva cha atmano hoti before you give while you are preparing to give the mind should be in very happy state i am doing something like that like this then dadang chittam pasade while you are giving you have to be very very happy that happiness is not a happiness that is a imaginary happiness you know you can show like i am happy but if inner your mind is not properly happy then it becomes powerless of of the the, the action dattva jatmano hoti after giving you have to again rejoice thinking of giving you rejoice again and again okay so now as i mentioned danang thanang manusanang danang duggati varanang dana is a, is a cover to close the door of the hell danang duggati varanang dana cover the door of the hell danan saggasa sopanan dana is a ladder to the heaven so now the problem whether this dan practice of generosity lead us to nibbana or not if you always wish while you are giving something practice generosity i want to be in the heaven Hmm? if you wish you are you are making a uh, mundane wishes mundane wishes so what buddha said when you practice generosity you should not wish for mundane wishes why definitely mundane wishes come to you 
This is universal nature. If you plant yadisang vapate bijang, tadisang harate palang. Whatever kind of seeds you plant, you will get the same kind of harvest, fruits. So no need to wish. While you are going to Penang, if you go by driving, by car, definitely you meet the other places, right? Ippo and what are the places? Huh? Hmm? Typing. All these uh, places you meet. So while you are preparing to go, you no need to wish you will I want to meet, I want to go through these roads, these cities, because you definitely meet those cities. You know? Then, when we practice generosity, we have to practice letting go. You know Bodhisattva. Uh, okay, finally, I tell you this uh, the Bodhisattva. Because of practicing generosity, every life he born in a very rich family. Maybe ruling family, or maybe the family of ministers, and uh, some very rich uh, merchants, vendors family. He born. By birth, he gained too many wealth, property. Halfway in his life, suddenly something struck him, a touch his wisdom, and he decided, no need to stay in this society. Then he gave away everything to the people. Uh, last second birth, last second birth of the Buddha, last uh, last birth, last second, no, last third birth, he was young man. He started to give away all the things of the country, even to the their enemies. Then people uh, make uh, you know disagreement of his behavior and ask his father send him out of the country. Then he went to the forest. He went to the forest. He uh, finally donated his wife, children. You know? So, mind became more powerful to the give up most dear ones. Mm, most dear ones also can give up when we come to this mentality. So, uh, bodhisattvas, the circle, become more powerful. Not only the bodhisattvas, you know, the people like you. Also, the circle is, is in that way. You're born in human world, you get something, you have something to give. You are not suffering lack of food, you are not suffering lack of cloth, you are not suffering no, because you don't have shelter. You have everything. When you wish to give, you want to give, you have something to give. This is the circle, the bodhisattvas also. Born in such place, again get chance to give, then give away. Then again born such a beautiful place, with the wealth and things, we see people and beings, they are not having something, then we have chances to give. Our circle, our energy become more powerful and powerful. But when you give, make sure you are not giving because you want to make your name. Hmm? Yeah. When someone passes away, you just put your name, it's no problem. When you sponsor for something, you put your name for 
that no problem but don't attach next day come and see oh my name is not there what happened yeah, i put the i gave this one you know if you behave like that you are giving is not a total give up total giving up is the is the proper giving is the link to nibbana maybe a small thing a small thing when you give away don't look at it again don't care what happened to it don't count and worry about that hmm? don't count again and again and worry if you do so then you are giving up is not there okay so other you know the benefits you will gain definitely after in this life and after this life also however you are people actually practice generosity in your previous lives this is how you are in this world how the space created for you in this world and the the properties the wealth artha gruhe nivartante when we come to the end of this life all our properties remain the places where they are smasane mitra bandavak all our beloved ones friends all will come to the cemetery they don't come with us again beyond that they just say okay very good sister very good brother very good bante uh, he, he was very nice he was very uh, nice then uh, one day they talk second day they enjoy eating and uh, you know keeping our our corpse is somewhere they are talking about business and all this and they enjoy one two days then invite monks and nuns or whoever then do some prayers they think they are duty done i mean what will happen to us okay then after that they will enjoy their life you know suskrutang duskrutang chaiva but two person follow us suskrutang whatever the good things that we are doing duskrutang whatever the bad things that we are doing two type of energies gachanta manu gachati follow the one who is living so therefore uh then accumulating the 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 wealth of things more types of dharma i'm i'm thinking of something like a uh, giving of service if you give your time to contribute uh at at a charity organization for example or if you help others maybe you are teaching them mathematics for example or you are helping them with uh, with the tasks and duties in life these are different types of service or different types of assistance and support that we render to other people would that how generosity might be linked to that is it possible for the practice of generosity to help is it possible for the practice of generosity to help one realize non self more and more and therefore that would contribute towards their realization of nibbana is that is that possible come again please yeah so i'm wondering more about the the understanding of non self mm. the understanding of anatta and as i as i understand it uh, the ultimate realization or the ultimate attainment of nibbana would uh, would it would be very essential to understand this reality this nature of non self mm. so i'm thinking how i'm thinking whether generosity could be linked to that is it possible for the practice of generosity uh to make it easier or make it more more to facilitate our understanding of non self does the practice of generosity uh help our gradual understanding of non self and therefore that would help us move towards nibbana these are two things the impermanence uh you know practicing impermanence or non self 
is the way that you are training your wisdom to see this world and to detach from the world okay so the generosity is giving away also practicing detachment hmm? uh, now we want to look uh, link this right we w you want to link uh, you want to know how to link this yeah link generosity to non-self okay yeah. so generosity the level of you are practicing is very important you know if you practice generosity or giving away just as uh, following others you know others do this and I also do that and uh, you have uh, you know people normally when they give they have some wishes in their mind hmm? we have created mundane wishes mundane wishes I don't say that you must not keep mundane wishes you can keep mundane wishes uh, this world is runs that way you know mm, but for dana uh, what what Buddhism always taught about to be focus in the Nibbana focus in the Nibbana so practicing anatta or in self is is related to the vipassana meditation vipassana meditation it means you are practicing impermanence suffering and non-self yeah, to open your wisdom so at the same time you have practiced generosity dana which is help you to detach from the world detach from the world so while when the when you are realized the Dhamma when you come to the ultimate realization not only the dana not only dana itself as I mentioned before the other qualities also hmm, the ten perfections and there may be more than that some some qualities all those qualities come together and help you for the realization especially dana is help you to detach from the world firstly it means a point there will be a point for you to let go everything let go everything let go your parents let go your property let go you everything and you renounce you you don't feel that I want this you feel that I don't want okay so come to that level you must have all other conditions together generosity is the main one I mean it's a it's a main one because the the let go or, or detachment process happening because of practicing generosity okay so the impermanence is is objected to your wisdom so impermanence not not itself impermanence suffering and non-self these are three together three together we have to develop within us to open wisdom then other qualities that we have practices support for that awareness is it clear Yes, sadhu sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Bhante, there's a, there's a saying somewhere that one thing divana is actually craving. Mm? One thing divana is craving. There's, there's a saying somewhere. Can you elaborate that? One thing nibbana is a craving. Yeah, it's good craving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Someone say like that. It means desiring for to be, uh, desiring to be arahants, desiring to release from. It's a craving. Yeah, it's good craving. It's not wrong. 
it's just it's, it's a force that you are creating yourself to to direct to that um, state you know that reality it is good craving craving no need to blame to the craving all the way eh? yeah so I, but also at the same time we are taught to let go mm. so if you want nibbana wouldn't that be not letting go you know what i mean no no it is not something like attachment you know it is just uh, no need to use craving uh, no, no need to use craving that mentality we can call that uh, is striving to be arahant isn't it yeah inspiration something like that you know potentiality potentiality to to the nibbana what buddha said dhammo pivo bikkave pahe tabbo pageva dhammo even dhamma you can let go what talk about the dhamma dhamma also can let go it means you should not attach to the status that you are gaining through mind especially in meditation we practice that if you come to some uh, the jhana level or calmness of your mind you should not attach to it you just do it but nibbana must focus nibbana definitely have to focus uh, manusika cha sampatti devaloke cha yarati yacha nibbana sampatti sabba metena labbati when one place where dana explain manusika cha sampatti as result of dana you can be in human world uh, manusika cha sampatti devaloke cha yarati you can born in heaven yacha nibbana sampatti if you wish yacha if you request or you make wish nibbana sampatti you can reach to the nibbana using that practice you know that means we have to focus on it we have to make focus whatever you do hold something focus the nibbana focus nibbana and be careful you are doing wholesome with unwholesome mentality or not that is a very very important thing keep in mind all the way okay Hi Bante. Uh, sometimes I get wondering, Bante, uh, given that we live this uh, mundane life as ladies, you know, as laymen, you know, as opposed to another category of mon monastic practice. You know? uh, can we actually, can we as a layman actually Uh, practice as layman, but with detachment, just like monastic. Mm. Practice as monastic with all those detachment. So we layman, can we do that? Can we actually practice detachment as layman to actually move forward uh, by creating all those causes mm. to arrive at the final shore? You know? Okay, so. Reaching to Nibbana uh, as Sangha member is like a song, you know, this, a, a kind of bo a bird walking on the, on the ch water channels, song. And uh, lay person um, like peacock, peacock. Because peacock, when open the peaches, very difficult to walk in the jungle, you know. It's too many troubles, too many troubles, too many difficulties. Mm, yeah, you have difficulties, you have duties. 
Sangha members also have duties. All Sangha members, uh, they are not uh, easy for them to practice themselves because they have to think about the, the society. We have two traditions, you know, one is forest tradition, the other one is the, the tradition of the city. If Buddhism only limited to forest tradition, now no more Buddhism. You know, why? Monks come up for arms put, or people go up for an arms put, they, they do their own works for their liberation. When people have problems, uh, uh, very bad moments in their lives, no support from a spiritual side. So, then Buddhism cannot survive, people find other way. So from the time that Buddhism introduced to, from India to other countries, Buddhism has developed in these two ways. Forest tradition and we call urban tradition. So both traditions we need. Hmm? Sometimes you don't expect from monks who are in the, the, in the city the same as a monk in the in the forest hmm? can be some differences some differences the same disciples of the buddha but some differences because adjustment to the society in different way hmm? so that's why you confuse always when you see different you know things like that uh, i just advise for your uh, question um yeah even being lay people you can you can practice detachment how this mic we use as instrument the car you use as instrument you know uh, money you use as instrument so you have to change your mentality yeah i have wife i have husband, I have children, I have to do duties for them, I do my duties for them, but without attachment, you can do, you know, if you let your mind to develop craving, attachment, what happened to some, some people now, you know, all life, studied halfway, get married, then got children, earn money, you know, working hard, too many, doing too many things, earn money, then educated children. Finally, children also get married. Then it's time for you to relax, let go everything, because your duty done for family. Then after the children married, one year, two year, the el elder daughter call you and ask, Mama, Papa, uh, I have to work, can you come and stay with my children? Huh? Can you come and stay with my children or can I drop my children to your house for some time? Again, the, they are attaching to the grandchildren. They cannot be away from them. So whole life with the attachments. So at least at one age of our life, we have to cut off all these attachments. Because we cannot bring anything, you know. If you develop your mentality with detachment, it is pretty sure you will be somewhere in in uh, in very good place even after this life mm? so one thing is yeah you have duties do your duties at the same time keep mentality i am just use the things as instruments mm? is it answer for you Uh, there's also, s I sometimes read and some people say this detachment means that you don't have passion for anything. 
Can you elaborate on that? Like people have passion to, let's say, improve themselves or passion for their business, whatever, you know. But because of detachment, you don't have passion for anything. Then you just lead a very cold life. Yes, that is, uh, that is true, you know. Anya hi labu panisa, anya nibbana gamini. This one we have to understand very clearly. Anya hi labu panisa. If you are course of your life to gain something, to earn, you know, to gain, to earn, to accumulate, it is one road. Anyahi nibbana gamini, anya nibbana gamini. If you want to practice detachment, dispassion, and find the path to nibbana is another way. Set my definite. Basically, the question was, it, it was uh, given, I think I had a branch mm. talk, and he said that there was this story about this man, he was his husband. Mall, he parked his motorbike, I think, on a 10th floor or something, mm. you know. Then when he came back, then he went, then... He couldn't find his bike, you know? Hmm. He said, oh my God, I lost my bike. Somebody must have stolen. At that point, he decided that, no, I can let go of this thing, hmm. you know? Uh, yes, I'm passionate about my bike, but the reality is that I've lost the bike. Then, but the story was quite funny, la, because he then realized actually he went to the 11th floor. So uh, obviously the bike wasn't there. La. His bike was on the 10th floor. Hmm. But the point, I think, was that at that point, he said that 
although I'm attached to this now, mm. I know that reality is stolen. I'm just letting it go. So I think that that was explanation was given. Yeah, that is true. That's when when that is why I mentioned at the beginning of our talk. Apply, apply to the situations. Detachment, uh, impermanence, all this you have to apply to the situations. Then in your uh, normal life you are very happy. Because we are worrying because of we lost something. So if you can apply, you are very happy every moment. The very, very serious case is sickness. When we get sick, we cannot we cannot accept it. We have to accept. Okay. Th thank you for the sharing, Tam Bhante. Okay. Can Bhante please uh, lead in the sharing of merits and making aspirations? Okay, so today joining with the morning puja offering and listening to the Dhamma, Dhamma, Dhamma talk and also uh, improving your knowledge in the Dhamma, the merits accumulated, we share with Devas and Bodhisattvas and all beings. May the Devas, Bodhisattvas and all beings be well, happy and peaceful, free from suffering. And may they protect you, your family members, houses, vehicles, and all your properties. Please repeat after me to share merits with devas, bodhisattvas, and all beings. Ittavatache Ammehi Sambhatang Punya Sampadang Sabbe Deva Anumodantu Sabbe Bhuta Anumodantu Sabbe Satta Anumodantu Sabbe Sampati Siddhya we transfer merits to our departed ones. Idam me nyati nang o tu sukita hon tu. Idam me nyati nang o tu sukita hon tu nyate yo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita on tu nyate yo. And also I bless to all of you for your family members by the power of Buddha Dhamma and Sangha. By the power of all Buddhas, Pacheka Buddhas, Sarahantas and Devas, may you be well, happy and peaceful, may you be free from suffering, troubles, problems, mind distress and body stress, may you maintain healthy and strong life, cultivating more and more good qualities and developing your mind and insight wisdom, may you find the ultimate happiness of Nibbana in this very life. Sabbhitiyo vivanjantu sabbero govinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo sukhi digayuko bhave sabbhitiyo vivanjantu sabbero govinasatu Mate bhavatvantarayo sukhi digayuko bhave sabbhitiyo vivajjantu sabbero govinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo sukhi digayuko bhave sadhu Sadhu, sadhu.